All right, welcome everybody to Google's Kitchen Sync, the download on food, Google's Teaching Kitchen. My name is Andrew Perlick. I'm the cafe manager here at Kitchen Sync Cafe, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome today uh, Chef uh, Tony Gemignani over here. Okay, so in uh, Chef Tony's 24 years making pizza, he's become an 11-time Pizza World Champion, including being the first and only Triple Crown winner for baking at the International Pizza Championships in Lecce, Italy. Okay, he's the, uh, he's the chef and owner of Tony's Pizza Napolitana in San Francisco. You may have seen him on Jay Leno. You may have seen him also on uh, Good Morning America, and you may have also seen him as a regular on the Food Network. He's going to show us how to make some pizzas today. So everybody, please join me in welcoming Chef Tony Gemignani. Okay. Oh, yeah. Who likes pizza? <laughs> My, who loves pizza? <laughs> nice. You know, 24 years ago is when I started. Um, anybody make dough at home? Everyone trying to make pizza dough at home? Some of you? Most of you? Nice. So that's always a challenge, making pizza dough at home. Want to hold that for me? All right. <laughs> don't get scared. Don't throw it back. Don't make sure. Don't throw it back. Um, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a basic recipe. This is the um, this is a dough recipe that I use in my restaurant at Tony's and actually all my restaurants. It's a little different, but uh, it's about 99% there. Uh, we're going to use a starter in this dough. So, if some of you don't know what a starter is, we're going to use a, a pouliche, which is a starter that has equal parts flour and water in it. So if I were to take one pound of flour, one pound of water, and a minute amount of yeast, mix it and let it sit on my counter for 18 hours, it would turn out like this. You smell it, it's acidic, uh, slightly sour. Um, if I use less water, it could be less acidic. We're gonna use this mass into our batch to make our dough much more exciting, much more flavorful, much more aromatic. So in the, in the book, The Pizza Bible, um, we talk a lot about starters. It's you know the pizzeria of tomorrow, and it's not really the pizzeria of today. When you think of that 80s and 90s pizzeria of just flour, salt, uh, yeast, and uh, water, it's, uh, things have progressed quite a bit. So you've heard, I'm sure, we're from the Bay Area, sourdough starters. Uh, there's ways to make this without using uh, yeast. You can naturally ferment it uh, over six days to seven days. But really when I cook, I really look for balance. I'm not looking for a starter that really is in the back of your mouth and all you taste is starter. I'm looking at you know, a complex dough that marries with the sauce that you know, takes you to the cheese and you find those ingredients. You know, when I make my pizzas, and if you've ever been to Tony's Pizza Napolitana, or any of my other places, you know, it's, it's always about balance. If it's sweet, it could be spicy, it's salty. You, you always have these three to four different flavor profiles, and you're gonna see this in a couple pizzas we're gonna make today. So we have our KitchenAid mixer. We have 100% um, double zero flour. It's my double zero flour, but it's a high gluten, high protein flour. A lot of times when you're making pizza at home, you grab all purpose flour, which is typically the wrong flour to grab. In the pizza business, we don't, typically grab all-purpose flour. We look for a protein that's in a range of 12.5 to 14.6% protein. So when you're shopping, when you're looking for a good flour to use, look for a high gluten, high protein flour. I added my flour here, and we have a few different ingredients. We have oil in front of me, malt, salt, yeast, and then we have our starter. We have two water mixtures, a warm water mixture, and almost an ice cold water mixture. So we have our yeast here. I'm going to warm it up in my warm water mixture. We're going to do a slow rise, meaning that am I going to make this dough today and eat it today? No. Do I want to eat this dough in 24 hours? That's good. If I want to eat it in 36 hours, that's better. If I want to eat it in 48 hours, that's even, that's even way better. So why do I want to eat old dough compared to young dough? One of the worst things you could do in the pizza business or when you're making pizza at home is to make dough today and eat it today. Well, yeast feeds on simple sugars. In our flour, we have about one to 3% simple sugar already in our flour, meaning that if our yeast goes in there, it's gonna find something to eat and it'll grow. So it's already present in flour. One of the rules of thumb in the, when you're cooking at 450, 500, 520, like a lot of um, our home ovens are 
typically at, we want to use a browning agent. And what's a browning agent? A sugar, a malt, a honey, a molasses, something that can help your dough brown. It's very important. One of the ingredients that you tend not to see when you're making pizzas at home is a browning agent. Why am I using malt? I'm using a low diastatic malt. It's a malt, it's a derivative of barley. It's more natural. I like the flavor profile better. Could you use sugar? Say, I can't find any powdered malt, could I use sugar? Yeah, and if you were to use sugar, you could use about three times as much sugar as you would malt. Malt's pretty strong. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna malt my flour. So I'm adding my flour to my malt. I'm gonna blend that up a little bit. I just woke up my yeast in warm water. Yeast lies dormant when it's cold. It wakes up when it's in warm water. But I wanna wake it up and then slow it down with cold water. Why didn't I add my malt to my warm water? It's like giving the yeast a Red Bull. I don't wanna wake up the yeast that much and get, get it going crazy. I wanna actually let my dough rise slower and I want my yeast to eat slower. So we have two water mixtures, cold and warm. I'm get, gonna add my yeast mixture to it. I added this first because if there was any leftover yeast in the bowl, I can always wash it out with my cold water. Does that make sense? Sometimes you'll, you'll see a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna add my water. Wait a little bit. I can put it up a little bit. And we have a spatula. Somebody grab me a spatula. So, thank you. As this is mixing, I could stop it, bring everything to the middle. Does anyone have a KitchenAid at home? Anyone make their dough by hand, old school? <laughs> kind of do both. I'm gonna add the rest of my water. So, I added my water, I added my yeast. I have a few ingredients left. Salt. I'm gonna keep my yeast and salt away from each other. They don't like each other. They actually hate each other. Yeast can kill, uh, salt can kill yeast. So I like to keep them separated. We have our oil. I'm gonna add that at the very end. Oil is a binding agent, it emulsifies. I don't wanna add my oil first because it won't let my water hydrate into my flour. And that's important. But I have this starter here. When am I gonna add my starter? My starter's pretty tacky. I'm gonna go ahead and wet my hands, stop my mix, and go ahead and add my starter in the middle. So why are we adding starter? Just said it a minute ago. Complexity, flavor. You guys need a coffee, you guys aren't awake, awake yet. <laughs> You're just really hungry. I got on the road at 440 to see you guys today. Yeah, right? People thought I was nuts. I had to go to San Francisco and San Francisco to here. Okay, so I'm gonna kick it up a little bit. I'm gonna add, my flour's incorporating uh, in my dough. Everything's kind of coming together. About two minutes. So while this is mixing, any questions? We're getting close to high 60s. With that poolish, with the starter, you're at over 65% hydration. It's a good question. So in the bread world or in the pizza world, mostly the bread world, we're always trying to get super hydrated. It's cool to say I have a 75% hydrated dough. What does that mean? More, I'm gonna add my salt now. The more water I have in my dough, does it mean it's a wetter dough? It does, but not during the baking process. During the baking process, if you really want a crispy pizza, you wanna actually try to achieve more water in your dough. So you're always trying to get more water in your dough. It's one of those things. As a baker, you're always trying to go up a percent or 2%. I just went from 65% um, to 66. What's hydration? What's baker's percentages? For example, I have 100 pounds of flour and I say make it 65% hydration. That means it would be 65 pounds of water. Does that make sense? If I said make it 2% salt, you always go to your flour ratio. So that means if I had 100 pounds, I would put two pounds of uh, salt into that recipe. 
So this has come together great. I'm gonna add my oil. I'm gonna let it mix for about two more minutes and then we're ready to go. Maybe a minute and a half, there's not much. I could finish this on the, um, on the table, which I will. Any other questions? Extra virgin olive oil. I'm not looking for one that's super expensive, but I am looking for an extra virgin. Why do we add oil? One, it helps emulsify. It binds everything together. Um, but I'm not really looking for it for flavor unless I'm looking for Chicago style pizza and I want 8%, 10% fat or oil or butter. Then I'm maybe looking for a different type. All right, so we're pretty good to go. Did somebody grab this for me? Great. So everyone can see. So I'm looking at this and I'm gonna bring it together. It's a little tacky, but tacky is good, right? So I'm finishing my dough on a nice hard surface. I'm developing the proteins, but I'm not gonna over mix it. I definitely didn't over mix it here. We didn't do a 10 minute batch. But when I look at it, and I'll let, I'll let this pass, pass this around. I'm making that ball nice and tight. You can kind of feel that and pass it around. <clears throat> wet dough, wet hands, it'll help. Sometimes you think that you're gonna grab flour. I'm not. Wanna throw this one at you? Ready now? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That was great, good job, it made me mess up. Huh. Wet hands, sticky dough. <laughs> you didn't get that, did you? He's good, he got it. He told me he was gonna get everything. So Chef Tony, what so, kind of uh, pizza is this dough good for? This dough is good for Sicilian style. This dough is great for classic Italian. This dough is great for Roman. It can be great for thin. It's great at 500, 550, 600. When you get to 650, you don't need a browning agent. Mm -hmm. So 500 to 650, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, you need a browning agent. Once you go after 650, then you need one. So for your home ovens, this dough is great for. So I have some dough in front of me but somebody wanted me to teach somebody how to toss pizzas. <laughs> Who wants to learn how to toss pizzas? I need two volunteers, two Googlers. What do we got? All right, buddy. You wanna come? Sure. I love it when they right. wear blue or black. <laughs> That's perfect. Come on, pizza guys were white. Jeez. It's okay. Who else do I have? We have one right over here. Wanna come? Okay. I might be able to get one more. Can you grab me some dough? Yeah, sure. How many would you like, Chef? Oh, two, just one more set. And if you put one more set together, that'd be great. Sure. What's your name? I'm Shang. Shang? Yep. And? Alice. Alice? Cool. All right. It's a little easier on a harder surface. Let's grab our dough and let's push it down. I made special dough for you guys. <laughs> easy? Uh, I tripled the salt on this to make it extra, extra durable. Don't eat this one. <laughs> you can have the one that fell, but you don't want to eat this one. Okay, so let's kind of stretch this out, and I'm kind of digging into it like this. So there's resistance in this. It's because of the triple salt. But I wanted to teach you guys how to throw. So if you've ever seen us on the Food Network doing stuff, it's triple the salt. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that good, no, we're good, we're good. But it makes it a little stronger. All right, buddy, we need some help here. <laughs> Come on, they're hungry. So, Chef, how did you get into pizza throwing? Well, my brother got me into the business 20, going on 24 years. Okay. We'll give you that one. <laughs> What'd you do to this one? Jesus. Man. <laughs> Hold on, let me help you. you know, workout at Google. Okay, you have this one. Let me teach you the basics. What hand do we uh, write with or draw with? Right hand. Right 
Yeah. Okay. Right palm. Want to go like this? Just like that. So instead of going like this, <laughs> we want to throw it up in the air. Pretty good. So palm, two fists. Pretty good. Palm, two fists. You're good. Palm, two fists. <laughs> She's better than you. <laughs> palm, two fists. OK, more of a spin, though. Yeah, see, she has the, you know, the wrist action. OK? Spin on your fingers. Very hard trick. <laughs> it's like a basketball, sort of. Just go across the shoulders. <laughs> no? Here, I'll show you. Right, right hand. Go to our left, go to our right, go across the shoulders. Jeez, <laughs> oh, everyone's watching too. Look at okay, the whip. Practice that. You're making me look bad. I mean, I dropped it first, right? Okay, great. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Catch that one. Here, keep your nose. And keep your dough. So we're going to make um, a pizza for you. It's a uh, sausage and stout pizza. It's not in the book. A lot of people were upset that this pizza was not in the book. Um, I kind of was developing it a little bit after. Uh, so we have a dough that has 20% Guinness in it. So you saw my water mixture. Let's take 20% out and substitute it with Guinness. So we have that in the dough. It's honey malted, so I have honey and malt. So I have two browning agents, a little bit of spelt, uh, whole wheat are inside the dough. We have some semolina. So there's a lot going on. There's, this is a multi-grain dough that has beer in it. There's some sausage that we're going to add to this that has beer, Guinness beer, in the sausage. We have a Guinness beer salt that we're going to finish it. We have a Guinness reduction. I mean, it's all about stout and multigrain, and it's pretty awesome. This is one of our most popular pizzas at um, Tony's, and uh, this is the one I'm going to show you guys. And we're going to make one that doesn't have any, um, doesn't have any of the uh, sausage. It's, we're going to make a vegetarian one, basically. So this is kind of football shaped. And we roll those out into a football shape. We're going to go ahead and stretch it out into a football shape. So what does that mean? I'm going to stretch it out this way instead of making it round. So when I look at this dough, it's, it's pretty hydrated. It's in the 70s, I'm going to be nice and gradual on this dough. I'm going to be nice and soft on this dough. I don't want to degas my dough. This is actually three-day-old dough. So the lighter you are on your pizza, the lighter your pizza will be. If you see me on the Neapolitan line at Tony's, I'm really soft on it. You see me on the slice line, New York slice line, I'm digging into it. Because that New York slice should be really tough. When you fold, it cracks, but it doesn't break. And when you have a Neapolitan, a true Verace pizza Napolitana, it should be like a pillow, be nice and airy. So those two elements are important. And when you look at my lines at Tony's, we have four pizza lines, seven ovens, 13 styles of pizza with different dough recipes. It's confusing, but a lot of times you'll see one of my guys maybe help me from my slice line coming on the Neapolitan line and they're just digging into it. I'm like, wait a minute, you gotta be gentle with this. You gotta treat like a lady. <laughs> okay, so we have 100% whole milk mozzarella, about six ounces. This is grande mozzarella that I'm using. It's high in fat, it's the best cheese you can buy. There's not really a more expensive mozzarella in the industry. You see a lot of places that are ranked the top pizzerias in the industry. Nine out of 10 usually use grande. 
You can find it. Some home users think you can't find it, but you can find it in some high-end grocery stores like Draeger's, which is kind of nearby. You can find it in some other grocery stores too. So I'll do the vegetarian one first. We have some sauteed mushrooms. Our roasted peppers. This pizza I kind of always like to go diagonal. It's the way I like to top it. You'll see the way I finish it. Um, I always think it, even my cut will be a diagonal cut. Caramelized onions. Any vegetarians here? Okay, good. I was going to say, if there's not, why am I doing it? No. Good, good. <laughs> we made special, and we made it to a point that we have some vegetarian pizzas, so that's important. So sometimes when you make a pizza, you think everything has to go on before. Not really. In the pizza business, and usually on a line, your finish line is as big as your make line, meaning that the ingredients have gone before and after. What's great about this is I used a lot of semolina, and these GI metal peels are awesome because everything falls through it. So if you have a dirty oven, you won't really with this kind of peel. So I'll land in that oven. We have it at, what, 520? Trying to get it at 520. We'll cook it six minutes and six minutes. It's, it's a pretty good time here. I'm going to cook it. If you look at this oven, I have two levels, the highest and the lowest. We have reversed half sheet pans. We don't have stones. If I were cooking, making pizzas at home, I would use a baking steel. It's a quarter inch, so some of them are a half inch or one eighth of an inch, a piece of steel that you, you put in. The recovery time is great and it, it gets hot. Or I would use my stone, or if you didn't have a stone, I would use a reverse baking uh, sheet. So. So we have those flipped over in our oven. Um, I have two. I just don't cook on one. In the book, I talk about cooking pizzas, starting on top and then finishing on the bottom. So it's always good to have two elements. Does that make sense? Like in the pizza business, when we put a pizza in, do we keep it there? We keep it there about 80% of the time, and then we move it to a hot spot to finish that bottom. So we just don't have one dedicated spot. So a lot of people just buy one stone. Really, you should invest in two stones or two steels. So we have our other pizza, our sausage, our onions. I'm going to add my caramelized onions first. Remember, there's no borders on these pizzas. I'm really making this pizza or decorating this pizza all the way to its ends. And when it comes to sausage, this is a sausage we make in-house. I want to pinch in the size of a dime. If I pinch in the size of a quarter, it may not cook in your home oven. So when you're using raw sausage, it's important. I don't like to pre-cook really anything. You want that fat, that flavor to really ooze into your pizza. It's important. Have any questions about anything? More tricks? Say it again? Question is worth you can buy it at centralmilling.com. Uh, you can see it at uh, fgpizza.com. Um, you know, even when you look at a King Arthur, they have a Sir Lancelot. That's good. It's a higher protein, uh, higher gluten. I would look for that flour. Justo's makes a good high performer flour. Uh, they're local. Um, Central Milling is one of the best, especially if you're into organics, they're one of the best uh, flour companies. They, they make uh, my double zero flour that's a high gluten, high protein. So there's a lot of great ones out there. I just you know, really recommend getting one and not just using an all-purpose flour. It'll, it'll cook way better and it'll, it'll, it'll be all around better. So I have this other pizza, but I'm waiting to put this pie on the bottom shelf so I can just let it sit here. It's nice to have a surface like this. Not so good to open up a pizza on a surface like that. So marble, granite, stainless are the perfect uh, surfaces for pizza. So I did talk about finishing ingredients. 
And what does that mean? Well, we have crushed red pepper. We have our salt, our Guinness salt, some fresh mozzarella. We have our fontina and some onions. We're gonna finish that pizza with all these ingredients. And then we have our Guinness reduction, which will give it this sweet, um, almost malty beer kind of flavor to it. It's been about four minutes, give or take. I'm gonna check it. We're cool. We have another two minutes, then I'm gonna take it, flip it around, and then put it on the bottom. So we have Q&A. We can do some questions if you guys have any. We've got a cooking. question in the back over there on the right. <clears throat> Uh, Why did you decide to make it football shaped instead of round? Oh, you know, it's it's pretty hydrated, and usually, um, if a pizza is really hydrated or in over seventy, it's harder to make in a circle. So I'll say that we'll make them more. Um, it's easier to open up. It kind of goes down the routes of a Roman style pizza as well, and Roman style pizzas are really hydrated. They could be thick or they could be thin. So that's the reason, really. It's a little tougher to make it into a circle. Some people say they want to, it's artisan and that's what they want. It's, it's not artisan, it just means that they can't make it in a circle. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit it. Cool. So, you experiment much with uh, beer, different beer styles in your dough? Yeah, Speaking yeah, I like the darker beers. I mean, I use Guinness for this, but the darker beers go a lot further. Uh, Anchor Steam, uh, Anchor Porter. Um, yeah, some of those beers always always tend to lean towards. I don't want it to just be tasting like you're, you're eating beer. I want it to taste a hint of beer. You know, I want to say, okay, there's beer in it, and then the salt. I don't want it to be super, you know, like you're drinking a bottle of Guinness. I don't, you know, or, or a pint of Guinness. Um, but I want to make sure that you kind of know that there's something in there. That make sense? Uh, when you do a long ferment like this, uh, are you degassing every day or you just leave it for, for three days? I'm letting days? it ferment. Yeah, it's a good question. So am I degassing? What does that mean? Is uh, I, I got my dough. I balled it. I put it in my fridge. Am I taking it out and degassing it? Am I taking it out and degassing it? No. I only have one really bench rest, cut and ball it, and then let it ferment for two days. Take it out. And one rule of thumb is, so see my pizza right here? I could pop, move this a little bit, move my ingredients over. I'm gonna turn it around and move it right into my, my bottom deck. Does that make sense? You guys can see it. So I'm not degassing and reballing and degassing. I have a starter in it that's definitely gonna give it flavor. I bench rest it, meaning that after it was done mixing, I let it sit for about 30 minutes, cut and ball it. I'm gonna put it in my fridge for one day, two days, maybe three days. Am I gonna take that dough out and use it right away? No, I'm gonna bring it out to room temperature like I did here. And since I let, let it come out to room temperature at, for three hours, well, I was in the car for like three hours, so mm -hmm. it's like five hours. Um, one rule of thumb, don't put cold dough in a, in a hot oven. So you wanna bring that dough up to room temp. Uh, question, uh, some pizzerias boast like a 1200 degree oven and cook for 60 seconds. What do you think about that? Yeah, I have uh, several of them, yeah. I cook at uh, my Tony's Pizza Napolitana, we have our Neapolitan, we cook at 900 degrees, then we have our cold oven and we cook at 1,000 degrees. Yeah, it's great. You know, I, I celebrate every style of pizza. So, you know, when it comes to me, if Chicago's done right, if New York's done right, if Neapolitan's done right, I, I kind of, you know, I kind of celebrate them, celebrate them all. Um, I'm gonna put this one now on the top. That other one has about two minutes and I'll show you how to finish that on the bottom. But yeah, you know, it depends on what you like. You know, like I said, I, I celebrate all of them, so I can't say that I love Chicago and I hate uh, Neapolitan. I think if it's done right, then it's, it's pretty awesome. That's why I have so many ovens, kind of crazy. How do you decide when to use pizza sauce? How do I decide when to use pizza sauce? Yeah. It depends on what I'm making. You know, sometimes you don't need it. If you ever have like white pizzas, pizzas that have no sauce, they're just as good as pizzas with sauce. Um, sometimes my reductions I use, I, I, I uh, tend to, I guess, uh, how can you say it? When I use reductions a lot, like a fig reduction or a fig, fig compote, or a, um, if I'm using like an orange, or if I'm doing a, um, maybe even a balsamic 
or if I'm doing a Guinness, I kind of treat that as my sauce. So it has that, um, I don't know, that's what I do. So whenever I use a lot of reductions or compotes and stuff like that, I tend to get away from the sauces and use that as my sauce. If that makes any sense to you. Kind of like this one. You know, I treat that Guinness reduction as the sauce. Um, so. so this pizza is just about done. Turned out pretty good for these ovens. Not bad. Nice bottom. Thing I always say is I got a great bottom, so <laughs> you know, something I always say. So, so I'm gonna cut through it it's because I want to finish my pizza um, after I cut it. A lot of people will finish it and make this beautiful pizza, and then they'll cut right through it and ruin it all. Uh, they don't want to do that. So I'm going to add some fresh mozzarella. Yeah, do I cut it immediately? That's a good question. I do. I cut it right away, and I want to serve it right away, um, especially Neapolitan. When you see a Neapolitan pizza and you're cooking it, you cringe when you're watching somebody eat it and, or, and they haven't eaten it for like two minutes. And it's on the table and they're talking and it's five minutes and there's 10 minutes and you're like, and I'll go and grab the pizza. I'll be oh, okay. And then I'll make them a new pizza. I'm like, here you go. I, I literally like it. It bothers you, as a, especially in Neapolitan because that's the pizza you want to eat fast and first. Sicilian style will, um, will, will actually um, sit well. So we have a crushed red pepper. We have that beer salt. I'm heavy on the hand with this beer salt. Some green onions. Get some more here. So Tony, where can you get that beer salt? Gonna make it. Oh really? Everything's <laughs> made, come on. Um, How do you make it? I'll tell you, hold on one second. All right. So we have our fontina. So these are some nice triangle pieces of fontina. It's very geometrical when you look at this kind of. Cool. And then we'll finish it with the Guinness. Um, if you went ahead and uh, reduced Guinness mm -hmm. down, and then once you reduced it down and it became um, somewhat of a glaze, you would add the salt to it, mm. sea salt to it, and keep cooking the salt into the, into the Guinness. Once it reduces down, you'll go ahead and have um, a nice Guinness salt. I'll let you guys try it if we have a little bit extra. So this is a Guinness reduction. When you reduce Guinness, uh, it's really nice and sweet and malty. So this is a great pizza you guys will love. Cool. There you go. So how are we looking here? About two minutes on top, and then we're gonna finish it on the bottom for another maybe four minutes. Um, we're almost done here. Do you guys have any more questions? Got another question in the back over there. Cool. Anyone wanna try a slice? The uh, <laughs> bubble that came up on your pizza there, do you Say generally? Say it again? The bubble that came up on your first pizza? Yeah. Is that something you generally try to avoid? Or no, not for this pizza. This, certain pizzas I, I tend to avoid it, like on my slice pizzas. This one, I was so soft to it, I, I expected it. If I, if I didn't see bubbles on this pizza, it means somebody was too hard on it. Why do we get bubbles on a pizza other than being very light on it? One is that your, your, uh, your dough could be cold. Cold dough brings lots of bubbles. This was a bubble that really came from my hands. I wanted, it, I wanted to have that. I want this pizza to you know, look thick, but really kind of be nice and thin. Even when I look at it here, it's nice and malty and, and thin and light and airy. Yeah, I want it to be like a nice aerated pizza. So it depends on the style, yeah. If there was no bubbles on this, I open up my door at the restaurant, I look at my, in my oven and I see a sausage and stout, I would go to the guy and say, you're way too hard on that pizza. I expect it to have bubbles. So it depends on the style. Do you have to manipulate the dough like you did spinning it around with all of them, or do different doughs have different techniques? Different doughs have different techniques. Sometimes you'll roll dough out if you wanted it thin. 
Sometimes you could dock it, which is little spikes that you'd roll over it so it would, uh, for thin crust pizzas, so it would gas. Sometimes you want a thicker rim. Sometimes you want a thinner rim, meaning, so it really depends on your hands. There's a different technique of slapping, which is a Neapolitan technique, or if you're picking it up off and you're stretching you know, a 22 inch pie around the edges. So it, it, all the pizzas have little techniques that are important. A lot of times I get guys that come in that have no technique and they're just doing all these different steps and uh, it kills you. It makes you want to cringe. So. <laughs> Can you briefly walk us through a simple red sauce? A simple red sauce? So a simple pizza sauce, typically you don't cook it. A lot of people think that you have to cook your sauce. You don't. Let's say you have three different types, a ground tomato, a uh, plum tomato, and a paste. Your paste is for sweetness, your ground is your base, and if you want texture, hand crushed plum tomatoes. So does that make sense? So if you just want it to be ground tomatoes, something light on a lighter, like on a thinner pizza, that's fine. If you're looking for a Sicilian style or a Chicago deep dish, then I would be adding that paste, definitely, and I would, to sweeten it naturally, and then I would add crushed tomatoes to make it more hearty. So the thicker the pie, the thicker the sauce. The thinner the pie, the thinner the sauce. Oregano, garlic, salt are the three standard ingredients. Pressed garlic, not chopped garlic where you're eating garlic, just the essence of garlic. Ba torn basil leaves, salt, you always have to have salt. Oregano is always nice. You can over sauce your pizzas, you don't want to over sauce our pizzas. Uh, I mean over spice our pizzas, we don't want to over spice our sauce. You want to taste tomato and then there's a little seasoning. When you make your sauce, you always use it the next day or about six to eight hours later. You never make your sauce and then use it because you'll always taste the seasoning first, not the tomato. It needs to set. Sauce has to set. It's important because you'll be all, man, this is way too salty. And you, you know what? In four hours, it would be totally different. I have a question. Um, I was wondering if you did any dessert pizzas and if you did, what are the differences in the dough and ingredients? So do I do any dessert pizzas and are there differences in the dough? Um, not necessarily. You could do a special um, dough recipe for desserts, but it's really the toppings that make it. Um, I kind of found that over the years that you don't need a specialty you know, dessert recipe when you just do what you want on top. Dessert pizzas kind of are like the first things you do when you start making pizzas, those are the things that you start experimenting with, like Nutella or bananas or triple berry and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you need to, you, I, I don't think you need to do anything special for dessert. My first book, Pizza, I wrote it, we had a special recipe for it. Um, as I get into it now, I can make any great dessert pizza just right out of, right out of dough. This dough is great if you fry it and you you make a zeppoli into it, it's pretty awesome, where you just toss it in uh, powdered sugar or, or sugar and a little cinnamon. So it's great dough to fry with. Yeah. This is the master dough with starter. So. Any other questions? Do you have a preference for coal or wood? Say again? Coal or wood? Coal or wood? I like them both right now, coal. You know, we're the only coal oven, I think, that's out here. My New Yorker pie out of, out of or my tomato pie out of the coal oven, it, it doesn't really get any better than that. But um, it depends. It, you get bored, and so you'll say, oh, this is my favorite pizza now. So you start doing it a lot. <laughs> Detroit style pizza is really great. If you guys ever had Detroit style, we're one of the only guys that has Detroit out here. Uh, that's a great pizza. You should try that one if you guys come in. So this one's just about done. We're just finishing the bottom and we're gonna finish it the same way we did here. Um, so you guys got it? Pretty good, you're all experts now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, definitely like to thank everyone here and then especially Google and it's my second time here but it's been a lot of fun, a lot of great questions and uh, it's a per pretty awesome campus so thanks for inviting me. All right, everybody join me in thanking Chef Tony Gemignani. <laughs>